walk. And I told her, I said, why in the hell would you throw something like that at a performer on stage? My boyfriend was paying too much attention to you. I said, what the hell did you bring him in here for? You know, I'm supposed to be, you know, warming him up for you. You're going to take him home. You're going to reap the benefits. I don't want him. So she says, well, I never thought about it that way. And I said, duh. <laughs> but uh, Ted was watching all this at the time, and he, he said he said that he got so entranced with the, the look on my face because I was about ready to ring her a whole new one. And she, uh, he, he said, I, he said I had to go. He said I had to write this story for you, and he wrote the script for Astro Zombies, where I was the secret agent and uh, very uh, nasty, mean girl, you know, and I'm after uh, somebody's brain. I want to teach you <laughs> how to work for me. <laughs> But uh, that's how I met Ted, and that was back in uh, nine to see. The show was in 1957 in um, Las Vegas, and he did the uh, movie. By the time he finished doing the script and uh, the the financing for it, uh, it was I think 1960, um, 1962-63. Right in there. It anyway. took a while to get the movie made. Yeah. Yes, as a matter of fact, he couldn't find me for a while either. <laughs> I was traveling. <laughs> I was all over the country. And in uh, 1958, I went to Paris. And I was working at the Father's Brigier and uh, was there for about six months. You know, so mm -hmm. it was very, very hard to locate me because I was traveling <laughs> and having lots and lots of fun. But I've known him, and uh, he and um, his kids and my kids were raised together. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I've known him for, uh, let's say, about 40, 46, 47 years. Mm -hmm. so and I know all his little secrets. <laughs> <laughs> just to compare and contrast a bit, how would you describe the differences between working uh, with a filmmaker like Russ Meyer and working with a filmmaker like Ted B. Michaels? Uh, Ted is a, uh, a, a very strict director. When it comes to working with him, he wants you to follow the script line per line, uh, and he prefers that you uh, do everything according to his, his rules. Well, sometimes he and I clash on things like that, and nine times out of ten, um, I will eventually get my way. <laughs> I don't want to ask what happens if you don't. <laughs> uh, he usually has sports a black guy for about a day or so. <laughs> <laughs> now you were telling me a very funny story about uh, customs, uh, going through Canadian customs. Oh, yes, that's a joy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they still have one of my suitcases with all my pictures in it, my comic books, my DVDs, my T-shirts. Uh, my little mini Astro Zombie statues and <laughs> all that's still in customs. They're going to deliver it Monday. I wanted to ask you um, something I came across. Um, I think it was on Wikipedia, the IMDb. Uh, it said that you at one point had aspirations to become a blues singer. Is that correct? Uh, actually, no. Uh, I always sang blues anyway, but uh, I had uh, aspirations to become an opera singer. Oh. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, uh, from about the age of about uh, eight, uh, I had a range of about oh, three octaves and uh, was what they call mezzo-soprano. And I uh, was the school soloist and um, every time there was some something special going on, they always had me doing the singing for it. And, um, and then I got in trouble. Well, I got in trouble. I got raped when I was nine years old. So, but the, the, I wound up going to a foreign school because the judge said I tempted those poor boys, all five. But I believe you told us that you had got your event in the end. Is that correct? It took me 12 years, but I got even with every one of them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Good for you. You know, and most of them. <laughs> At the time, most of them 
more, like I think the youngest one was 18 and the oldest one was 21. And his, he was the one whose father paid the judge off. He gave him a thousand dollars and said, put her in your home. <laughs> so that's where I went because uh, we were the only Oriental Japanese family in that area for like a 20 mile radius. And it was, uh, it was very interesting uh, growing up in Chicago in an Italian Jewish black neighborhood. Being the only Oriental family, uh, I got to experience a lot of prejudice firsthand. <laughs> but I learned. I mean, it got to the point where um, fighting my way to and from school, I finally had to get to the point where <coughs> either I kicked ass or they kicked mine. And I wasn't going to let them do that to me anymore. So I did. <laughs> and then I developed my own girl gang. And we had a girl gang uh, of uh, four, four of us. Uh, there was uh, Rose, Valerie, and, um, and uh, Edie, and myself. Anyway, um, she, uh, all of us, we used to roam our neighborhood to keep all the girls in the neighborhood safe so that nobody would ever get what I got. <laughs> so how did this upbringing, how did you go from um, those early years to getting interested in being a performer? Well, first of all, uh, I was basically kind of raised in a uh, um, theatrical family. My father was in silent movies and um, my mother was a circus acrobat. So uh, we used to do, you know, work out a lot at, at home, and my father was the one who was teaching me um, how to uh, learn martial arts at the beginning. Uh, when I was, oh, we, I started when I was about seven years old. And um, since he wasn't a uh, licensed instructor, uh, nobody ever recognized the fact that uh, I was capable of handling myself after after I came back out of uh, reform school. <laughs> but uh, I would say, oh, I, I'd say that, you know, learning learning to be uh, tough and, uh, and uh, learning to uh, do uh, the acrobats, uh, the acrobatics that I did in my dance routine for my mother helped me a whole lot. When I uh, went to California, I went to California to get away from the reform school thing. Um, I went to California and became a, uh, a, a bathing suit model. And then I started modeling for Harold, I don't know if you know Harold Lloyd the Comedian, the old son of the movie Comedians. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, he developed the 3D camera. He helped develop it. Uh, most people don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> and he has, uh, oh, I, I'd say he had about uh, oh, 20,000 or 30,000 different pictures of me. I don't know what he did with them all, but... <laughs> 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 but I mean, we, we had a lot of fun uh, modeling, at uh, first a bathing suit, and then finally he talked me into uh, going topless. Yes. And uh, posing for a nude. Mm. And that was the only photographer, right? Yeah, he was the only one, and uh, if he had ever known how old I was at the time, he would have had a heart attack. Wow. <laughs> Why, how old were you? I was 13. Wow. <laughs> I was 13 and I started, then I, then, uh, I got a makeup poisoning and went back to Chicago and started uh, as, a, uh, as a legitimate dancer uh, because uh, while working in California, one of the uh, acts didn't show up at the club where I was 